Today, I am answering 10 extreme minimalism questions, and my friend Sharin is answering those exact same 10 questions over on her channel. So after you're done watching this video, head over there to see what Sharin thinks about extreme minimalism. If you're new around here, welcome. I'm Lena. I make money at home videos. I share what has helped us reach our financial goals while still living a full life. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that little notification bell. These questions are from Sharin, and the first one is, would you ever buy a designer bag like a Dior bag for $5,000? And my answer is, yes, I would if we made enough money and I wanted it. So if you make $100,000 and you've decided that you're gonna blow on things you don't need and that are just fun and expensive, that would be $1,000 a year on fun, exciting things. And you couldn't buy a designer bag for $1,000, but what if you made $500,000 a year and you decided to blow 1% of $500,000 a year? That's only $5,000. So then it seems a lot less ridiculous to spend that much money on a bag. For me, it's not really about having or not having nice expensive things. It's about how did you get them and what is that relative to your income. Next up is would you ever stay in a luxury resort for $500 a night? And I think this is kind of goes along with the last one. It depends how much money you make. It depends how much value it would add to your life. Uh, my husband and I were kind of budgeting out how much it would cost to go to Hawaii. And we were like, okay, so it would be like $1,800 for uh, for the whole weekend um, at a nice Airbnb. And then we're like, okay, but what would it be at a resort? And so we're looking and we're seeing prices that look similar, like $1,500. And we're like, well, why wouldn't we stay at the resort? Well, it turns out that $1,500 was per night. <laughs> we were shocked. <laughs> we're like, oh, okay. So it is way more cost effective to stay at an Airbnb if you're going to Hawaii because those resorts can be like $2,000 a night. That seems outrageous to me. But if we were rolling in money and laughing, like my sister says, uh, sure, we could spend $2,000 a night on a hotel. Do you have to spend that much money to have fun? Absolutely not. We love camping and we found a camp spot where we can camp for free and we have a great time doing that too. So the amount of money does not necessarily equate to the amount of fun. So yes, we are taking our kids to Disneyland in a few months and no, it was not free to book that trip, but we're never gonna get our kids' childhood back and those memories with them and that time spent with them. Next up, Sharin asks, would you ever do that no furniture extreme minimalist idea? And for me, the answer is a hard no. Unless for some reason, somebody needed my couch more than I did. And we felt like we needed to give it away for some reason. We only got it for $40. So it's not worth that much. And, you know, maybe someone's house burned down and we really felt like we should give away our couch. You know, I would find another one on Facebook Marketplace within a couple weeks and we'd have another couch. <laughs> I guess I don't see a reason to not have furniture um, because you can get it so inexpensively. And I get the idea of having like no objects, but I guess I value comfort. I don't want to be frugal because I want people to notice and say, wow, whoa, you're just doing all the things. That's just crazy. Like, I don't necessarily want people to notice that I'm being frugal in particular. Um, it should just seem normal, but you were just clever and you saved a lot of money. Next up, what is one non-frugal, non-minimalist habit? I'm really curious about how Sharin is gonna answer this question. So after you're done here, be sure you go and check out her video with this same title and leave a comment uh, letting her know that I sent you. So my non-frugal habits would probably be buying Portland leather, even though if you watch my Portland leather video, you can see that it actually could be kind of frugal. Portland leather is not super expensive and it lasts a long time. So I bought one purse that's my main everyday purse like years and years ago. Maybe it's four years ago. I can't even remember at this point, but it looks 
so good and um, it looks just the same as when I bought it. So yes, it was more expensive, but it lasts forever. So I'm definitely into buying more expensive things that will last longer. Another non-frugal thing that we do is we go on vacations. We visit our family, we go on trips. One of our goals is to uh, bond as a family and have fun times as a family and to go and do fun things. So we are meeting one of our goals uh, by going on vacation. It's not necessarily a money goal, but it's a relational goal. And I think those can be just as important as financial goals. I don't want to be so extreme that I miss out on my children's childhood or um, hanging out with my family. Uh, when I really wanted to because I was saving all the money. What is extreme minimalist to you and how far would you go? Leave your answer to this question in the comments. I'm so curious what the different levels are for different people. So as far as me, uh, this is kind of a complicated question because I'm married to another human being and um, he has different opinions than me. <laughs> what? I am much more willing to do extreme minimalist things than him. So we often meet in the middle and we try to figure out how we can reach our goals together and still be happy with our quality of life. I think if it was just me, I would eat really plain, cheap food and it would be all the same every day. My go-to is always uh, <laughs> cucumbers and uh, tuna. You know, you got your protein, you've got your vegetables, you're just ready to go. Uh, my husband would not be happy eating that every day whatsoever. Um, that would make him very unhappy. And so because my marriage is very important to me, this is meeting in the middle. Even though we do want to go on road trips uh, around the USA, um, but I think we're gonna end up doing that for like a month or two, not like full-time travelers in an RV or anything like that. So we probably won't end up selling our house. Uh, to do that and get that minimalist. I think realistically, I could be an extreme minimalist with no extras, nothing fancy, nothing exciting or fun for probably like six months. And then I might fall off the bandwagon a little bit because it would kind of get to be no fun. And I really like orders things on Amazon. So for better or worse, I think that there's a time restraint on how long I could be an extreme minimalist. And now on to the extreme frugal minimalist questions that I came up with. And the first one is what do you do with gifts that you don't like? I'm really excited to hear Sharin's answer on this one because this is so difficult for me, but also leave your answer in the comments. I'm always looking for ideas. This is just a really hard one, especially for me. Like if our ideal is to not keep things in our house that don't bring us joy or don't have a use, that means that sometimes you will receive things as gifts or white elephant moments uh, that you don't like and you don't want to keep around. But at least for me, there's this guilt attached to it that um, I should use this gift and I should enjoy it and post a bunch of pictures about it um, so that the other person knows that I appreciate their gift. So I do not have the best answer for this, um, but I think that when someone gives you a gift, that it leaves their possession and it is now in your possession. So it doesn't have anything to do with them anymore. They made the gesture of love, they gave you the token, and now it is released into your care. So what you do with that item should be technically totally your business. Keep it, love it, gift it again, uh, donate it, whatever. Next up, does minimalism work with kids? So I think minimalism itself could work with kids, but I think it could actually be quite expensive because you're not saving anything extra. You have the least amount of possessions humanly possible, um, which means that if you have more than one child, uh, that coat is not in the closet waiting. So then you have to buy another one. Um, and maybe that's what you wanna do and your budget allows for that. But I think that 
frugal minimalism can work with kids if that's about spending as little money as possible. Because if you are into hand-me-downs and keeping uh, stuff from your older kids to use with your younger kids, you can save a ton of money, but it does take some space. Next up is, does extreme minimalism work long term? And I would say for most people, it doesn't. And I would say it doesn't work long term for me, but I think it can be a great short term uh, goal. So part of Dave Ramsey's um, philosophy is that if you can't pay it off in less than two years and it's not your house, you should just sell it. Because if your debt payoff journey takes more than two years, you'll definitely have burnout. And I really agree. And I feel like two years is actually kind of a long time. It's hard to be gazelle intense for extended periods of time. And I also think that this extremeness can lead to burnout and um, yo-yo budgeting, as I like to call it. So for me, yo-yo budgeting is, you know, one day you're like, we're going to save all the money. We're not going to buy anything. And then you realize it's not working and there's no wiggle room in your plan. And so you're like, well, I might as well give up and buy all the things. And then you totally blow your budget and you don't get closer to your financial dreams because you decided to be extreme. So I think that's a danger with extreme frugal minimalism. What is the difference between minimalism and extreme minimalism? I'm sure that there are a lot of different opinions about this out there, um, but for me, I'm not even sure I would call myself a minimalist in the true sense of the word. Can I be a middleist? Um, I want to be mindful about the things we bring into our home and not have excess things um, cluttering our lives and our minds. But I also don't want to be stressing about having only 30 books. So I think minimalism can look a lot of different ways, but I think it's about being mindful of the things that you have in your house and not keeping things that you don't love and are not useful. When I'm thinking about extreme minimalism, I'm thinking about having all of your worldly possessions in your backpack. I'm thinking about those YouTube videos where they have the thumbnails and they have everything that they own uh, laying on the floor in their thumbnail. So like maybe they own 30 or 50 items total. You've got your two shirts, your one pair of pants. And I think this could work for a limited amount of time for a certain kind of person in a certain phase of life. But I do not think that that is something that I could do. What type of person do you think minimalism works best for? And can it work for everyone? So I think minimalism works best for people that are very uh, set in their life. They found the thing that they want to do with their life. They found the people that they want to be with. Um, they know what those people are like. They know the kind of activities they are planning to do for the rest of their life and probably not growing children. I think the principles of minimalism can benefit a lot of people, especially um, I have definitely gone through all of our possessions at least a couple times to kind of figure out, do we really want this? Um, is this something that's really important to us? Um, and thinking through that with my husband and his possessions also. And I think it's great to go through that process at least a couple of times in your life, especially if you need a clean out or you're moving. Um, so I think those principles are super beneficial, um, but that doesn't mean that you have to live by everything. And it doesn't mean that you have to be a minimalist forever to benefit from those principles. So can minimalism work for everyone? I think maybe I should have put this question is, can minimalism make everyone happy? And I think the answer is no. Supposing that everyone would be happier as a minimalist is assuming that everyone has the same needs and desires and kind of ignoring our uniqueness as people. Um, so I think it can be great for some and not work for others. Now that you've heard my responses to these questions, click that link in the description, head over to Sharin's channel and see how she answered these same questions. Be sure to leave her comment. Let her know that I sent you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.